Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this we're going to the come video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We're going to be starting things out with the GTX 1180 rumours, specifically which have emerged on the Tech Power Up database, and detailing why you probably shouldn't be too excited about their existence. Then we're going to move over to Intel, specifically on the dedicated GPU front. There are numerous reports that we will be seeing the new discrete GPUs from Intel be revealed at next year's CES. So that would, of course, be CES 2019. And then we'll do something a bit different. I'm going to be handing the video over to Amy so she can close you all out with a couple of topics. Before we begin, I want to encourage you, of course, to click the subscribe and notification buttons. And thank you all very much recently for the support. It has been greatly appreciated. But now, let's begin with the first story, and that is the GTX 1180. So it is a couple of years now since NVIDIA first launched the Pascal architecture with, of course, the GTX 1070 and 1080 cards, and they have been monumentally successful. But for the last 6 to 12 months, much of the discussion has been, of course, when we're going to be seeing the successor to these particular cards. We originally thought it was going to be Volta, of course, but that turned out to be pretty much exclusive for HPC usage. And since then, we've heard numerous release date rumours and so much other stuff, but nothing so far has bared fruit. So, what has happened recently? Well, techpowerup.com have placed a GTX 1180 entry in its database, and immediately several folks have already messaged me regarding this and asking my opinions. Rather interesting will be several different factors of this particular uh, set of specs, but I'm going to read out a couple of them. GV104, so it's based on Volta. It's a 12nm process and has 3,584 shaders, 224 TMUs, 64 ROPs. Of course, the 3,584 shaders go over 28 SMs, which is pretty much what you'd expect. The boost clock is 1,582 uh, megahertz. The memory clock runs at 12,000 megahertz and is running on GDDR6 memory and has a grand total of 16 gigabytes. And supposedly it has a TDP of 200 watts and of course also has a PCIe 3.0 uh, times 16 interface. I don't want to analyze the specifications too much in this particular case. Normally with something like this I would deep, do a deep dive but I have to say that this is one of those instances I don't particularly feel that this is worth it. In my personal opinion, this entry is based upon some earlier rumours we heard and seems a cross between some rumours from a website called WCCF Tech, a couple of rumours from AIBs, and a few other bits and bobs all just thrown together. Does that mean that there's no truth to it at all? Well, honestly, the biggest factor for me is the fact that it's using Volta and the memory speeds. The fact it's using Volta at this point pretty much tells me it's highly unlikely. At the end of the day, I'm expecting it to be Ampere or Turing or whatever else, which may admittedly be at some derivative of Volta. It possibly might be based upon the Volta architecture with certain changes made so that it's more focused on gaming. But to be honest, at this point, we don't know that much. It's also possible it could be based on some type of iteration of Pascal, so think almost as a Pascal refresh, perhaps built on a 12nm process, have faster memory, possibly a higher uh, CUDA core count, perhaps higher clock speeds, whatever, but essentially an iteration of Pascal, or once again, it could even possibly be not a variant of Volta, not a variant of Pascal, but instead a completely separate architecture. At the end of the day, we just do not know yet. And I also feel that the memory speeds themselves are not quite high enough. After all, uh, GDDR5X has RAM that's pretty much the speed. It's possible this is based upon an early engineering sample, but quite frankly at this point I think it's probably way below what we'd expect, and I wouldn't be surprised if it's more like 14 or so, or possibly even higher. But with that said, these are only rumours, but I just wanted to put my opinion out for this. So here's another rumour, and this one is coming to us from Intel. Intel, of course, at the moment are relying on AMD to provide them chips for certain 8th generation based APUs. And of course, these have a Vega GPU combined with an 8th generation Intel processor. 
But recently, Intel have been very candid in the fact that it is working on its own discrete GPU. The first hints of this, of course, were the reports and then final confirmation that Raj Akadori uh, migrated to uh, Intel. And then, of course, most recently, uh, Chris Hook. Raja, of course, was the chief over at RTG, and then Chris Hook was responsible essentially for the marketing. But now, uh, sources over at Tweaktown are reporting that we will be seeing something very, very big. And they have already reached the first step and now preparing for a big launch. So we're going to be expecting something, and this is a quote from their article, something late this year with attention to be placed at Intel at CES 2019 in January, where Intel could reveal their new GPU. I will say, from my point of view, the fact that it's such a short time frame is very interesting. So this means that a couple of things. One, Intel were not that far behind in terms of the development and the uh, acquisition of Raj Akhadori, and perhaps his knowledge has certainly helped to spearhead this. And the fact of the matter is, and I'm going to probably tell you something that's going to shock you to the core, Intel are a pretty lucrative company. They make a lot of money. And... The bottom line is, they have the funds, they have the intellectual talent, and they have the resources, both financial and physical, to essentially put a lot of weight behind a project. So it's possible that these accelerated timeframes are just the very sheer fact of force of will, and force of budget, and force of, well, stuff at Intel. I'm not saying it is this, and honestly, these timeframes are way, 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 way ahead of what I would expect. But it's possible that. Another possibility is that the GPU we're going to be seeing won't be a major revolutionary design. Now, don't forget, there's two specific GPUs we know about. One is Arctic Sound, the second is Jupiter Sound. We're going to begin with Arctic Sound, which is the first generation of discrete GPU. It will be known as the 12th generation graphics from Intel. And according to leaks from another source, his name is Ashraf Easa. It will be uh, fabricating using EMIB, which is Embedded Multi-Die Interconnect Bridge. You can see why they use the acronym, can't you? And it will be utilizing that to connect to the processor. So very much like they do currently with Vega and their own Intel-based CPUs. But because EMIB is a thing, what they can do is essentially connect multiple of these GPUs together to form a larger, more powerful GPU. So essentially there's going to be multiple MCM modules, and of course this is not the first time that a company has decided to do this. We've heard reports over at NVIDIA. In fact, if you want to Google this, it's a rather interesting discussion piece. I also did cover it myself, but uh, NVIDIA discusses multi-GPU dies. There was a research paper that NVIDIA actually released, which demonstrates that rather than having a monolithic GPU, which just... For those who don't know, that's one large-ass GPU that we've currently got. For example, the 1080 or the 1080 Ti or the Titans, whatever. They're an example of a monolithic GPU. However, instead, if you do it more across a module design, what you'll find is that you can actually put out higher levels of performance. In fact, in NVIDIA's case, they're running simulations and they found that a single GPU was going to be slower than the monolithic design. How much slower? Well, according to their simulations, a GPU that was created with the largest possible configuration in reality, so the largest possible that could be called and, you know, work in reality, versus a monolithic design, it was still behind by 45.5%. So that's pretty significant. And it's still considerably slower than, uh, sorry, faster than a multi-GPU card as well. So multi-card solutions were about, well, about 27% slower than, once again, the multi-GPU module. My current prediction, honestly, is that this is going to be a very large shake-up to the GPU market. Now, whether we're going to see a gaming derivative or not is unknown. It's obvious from what Intel have said that one of their primary concerns is artificial intelligence. One of the reasons behind that is pretty obvious. It's by far going to be one of the most lucrative markets over the next several years, as well as HPC in general. So that, of course, would be cloud-based solutions. That would be financial analyst software. That would be physics and other simulations that would be the entire gamut however it would also be rather easy for intel over the several months to be able to scale the solution to gaming 
And honestly, if you actually look at some of the ads, I mean, I obviously on Facebook, and one of the things I've noticed recently is Intel have definitely been stepping up a couple of things. The first is that they've been stepping up Intel for games developers, and this obviously really focuses on gaming itself as well as development and the GPUs. The second thing is that they've been focusing very much on the drivers on their, well, you know, platforms. This is probably a good indicator. Certainly not a confirmation by any stretch of the imagination, but it is a good indicator that AMD and NVIDIA are not just going to have competition in the HPC space, but also they're going to have competition in the gaming space. That could be really good for us as customers. It does make me actually more concerned for AMD than what it does for NVIDIA. I think NVIDIA have the technology down to pat. I don't want AMD to be forced out of the market. I'm not saying they will be, but if they don't have a really good competitor, and I mean a really good competitor, and uh, Intel do, well, it's going to be very, very, very difficult to fend off two really good competitors uh, for, uh, of course, AMD. The second uh, thing we need to, of course, take into consideration is the fact that there is, after that, Jupiter Sound will be on the market. Now, Jupiter Sound, we don't know too much about, and certainly we can't even begin to hazard a guess of the timeline. All I can say is it's going to be the successor, but what a successor is, it could be, you know, three months, it could be three years, it could be 30 years. Obviously, more realistic, it's going to be 12 to 24 months. My gut feeling, however, is that Jupiter is going to be considerably more advanced. I'm probably guessing this, but Arctic is going to be more a... I, w I don't like to use the word proof, uh, sorry, term proof of concept, because it almost feels like I'm shortchanging the uh, team over there, but I think it's going to be very much like we're testing things out and getting things ready. And then Jupiter is, of course, going to be much more in-depth. They're probably going to fix a lot of the issues with that current design. That doesn't necessarily mean for... A simple term it's going to be a TikTok philosophy it could be very much a different architecture but they're probably going to want to iron out the principles and the actual process of manufacturing such a large scale GPU anyway I think that's just about it for me so I'm going to hand you over to Amy hopefully I shall see you soon and I'm going to leave you in Amy's capable hands see you soon now, I'm sure you were sad to see Paul go there, but I'm here to give you an update on what's going on with AMD and ASRock. Now, you may have seen the reports floating around the internet, or on Tom's Hardware Germany to be specific, basically saying that AMD was banning ASRock from selling their Radeon GPUs in Europe, and this was kind of nested in a review of the RX 580 Phantom Gaming X graphics card, and apparently an ASRock representative told Tom's Hardware, quote, AMD has agreed sorry, has not agreed to sell ASRock GPUs in the EU, that is really a pity. Now what we have here is another report, thanks to someone over at Forbes, and of course I'm going to link this article in the description below this video, and they spoke to a representative for ASRock's global PR activities. And basically what they're saying here is that ASRock got into the GPU game unsurprisingly because of cryptocurrency mining, and you may recall that there were reports floating around that they were launching mining-based SKUs. So, basically, what's happened is that this source has told Forbes, and this is kind of sources reporting on sources, so do keep that in mind. However, what they have said is that ASRock themselves made the decision to not sell Phantom Gaming graphics cards commercially. They will not appear in online or brick and mortar retail shops. These are intended for miners and industrial use and the minimum order quantity is 500 pieces. So clearly these are not intended, at least in Europe, for you or I, the average gamer. They are intended for people buying these things in bulk. Now you might wonder why ASRock have actually done this, you know, why have they put this limitation in place? And it could have been on the inflate due to the inflated prices of graphics card. Obviously that has started to come down finally, thank God. But we also have memory prices as well. And it might just be that ASRock are kind of tentatively dipping their toes in this sort of Radeon water for now. And are wanting to produce very limited quantities and ensure guaranteed sales for the time being. Until the market is a little less turbulent. Because while it is settling down, it is still a little bit kind of on a tightrope. We don't know if it's going to spring back up again or continue to decline. Or if it's going to level out to a sort of around MSRP level. Which is kind of where we want it to be. Obviously under MSRP is, is great. But realistically speaking, we at least want it to be at MSRP, you know, which is 
way, way better than what we've seen over the last few months. So that is pure speculation on my part. I obviously don't want to speak for Azrock here as to why they've done this, but that makes sense that they kind of want to not overdo it and kind of shoot themselves in the foot by producing too many units and trying to bite off more than they can chew, as it were. Now, unfortunately, there's no comment from AMD in the Forbes article. The writer does say that they have reached out, but at the moment, at least, they have yet to hear any comments. That may change, of course. As I said, the article is going to be linked in the description below, so do go give it a read if you're at all curious. So, basically, the TLDR of all of that is that AMD are not banning them from doing it. This is a decision that Azrock made themselves, according to the rep that spoke to Forbes. Anyway, that is me done for this video. Thank you very much for watching, and of course, thank you for watching Paul's segment as well. I'll see you next time.